Hey, this is Mike. Before I get started, please hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I have hundreds of videos of different cars of all makes and models. Or not all, but a lot of different makes. So, all different kinds. So, I'm sure you will really enjoy my channel. Go ahead and subscribe now. Okay, so, after, now that that's over with, I am here at Sparks Toyota in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And they are allowing me to show you this 2015 Toyota Sienna XLE in Blizzard Pearl. Really awesome choice for a van. It has lots of features on the inside and it looks good too. That's my opinion. Tell me what you think. At any time in the video, if you have a question, a clarification, please leave it in the comment section immediately. Just go ahead and pause the video and just type it right away. That way you don't forget. Okay, so this one has the 17 inch alloy wheels with the four-wheel disc brakes. And you can see it has a sleek aerodynamic design. And the front windows have been tinted by the dealer so they don't always uh, come from, they don't come with the factory with tinted uh, glass in the front, but the back glass are, they do have the privacy glass. So that's a done deal. So here in the front, it has the projector headlights projector low beam headlights powered by halogen bulbs and then you have the reflector headlights here for the high beams and they are also halogen and the fog lights there at the bottom and that blizzard pearl, pearl paint I don't know if you can tell but when the sun hits it it's really neat looking it has a little just a well it looks like a pearl I guess So let's go ahead and start over here on the passenger door after we take a quick peek at the window sticker, which you might have to use the pause button to look at. I'll leave, leave a bunch of information in the description too. So, Okay, so before I get inside, I just want to point out that this is the key. And why am I pointing that out? It's just this box. Now I can use these buttons on the, the key to open and close the doors. Um, I can also use the key to lock and unlock the doors. So I'm go actually going to leave the key in my pocket the whole time because you can actually use this car without actually taking the key out of your pocket. So away it goes. Now to lock and unlock the door with the key in your pocket, um, all you have to do is to unlock it. You walk up, let's say it looks, it's locked now. Uh, I just put my hand behind the handle, it senses the key. It's a proximity key. It senses my hand touching the handle and it will unlock. To lock it, you just send, put your finger here and it senses your finger, it senses the key. It's not gonna lock now because the vehicle's running, but that's the procedure on locking and unlocking the vehicle. Here's the inside of the passenger side and you'd have like a two-tone light tan and like a brown color. Really classy looking and, and, and just not too wild with the designs. It just has a real easy on the eyes quality look to it. Pretty much everything soft to the touch. You do have this uh, wood grain there, like a dark mahogany looking oak wood grain. And then you have some storage space there on the door as well as a bottle holder. You do have power seats on the passenger side. Plenty of leg room, tan leather seats with stitching and bolsters, very, very, very comfortable seats, even in the back. I mean, all the seats are just really, really comfortable. It does have this, uh, two glove compartments, so you have one down here, and then you want one up here, so you have plenty of space, and it utilizes that space in the dash that would normally go unused. Okay, so these are power doors. So I can use the key, but also all I have to do is just pull the handle like that, and it automatically just opens up for me. All right, so this is the second row seats, seating area. You can see the, the leg room is crazy awesome. And it has a center seat, which you can remove, uh, and that way you have the captain's chairs with the walk space between the chairs. So you can see the seats have really good bolstering. Uh, these seats do recline back and go forward, and they have the stitching, very comfortable, and there's a little bit of a slant to the back seats 
so they're just kind of in a more comfortable position just by the nature of the seat. Um, I'm going to show you the third row seat here in just a minute on the other side. I want to show you something there. So to close the door, we could just pull that handle. There's also a little button in there, which I'll show you on the other side. Okay, so looking at the back, we have that spoiler there at the top to get better aerodynamics. And you have parking sensors across the back. Backup camera. So, to open this up, I can just push this button. It opens right up. And of course, it you know will power down as well. So, here in the back, we have this big open storage area. We have storage area there. And down here on the floor, it just goes right on down. Now, you can use that for putting stuff. You can also hang grocery bags on the backs of the seats here, which is pretty cool so they don't spill out everywhere. You have a power supply and a light over here. Another hook there for whatever you want to hook there. Maybe a, a net or a trash bag or whatever. But these seats do fold down into this big open compartment, so where you have a flat floor. So if you're not using the third row for any passengers, all you have to do is um, pull this handle here. Try to get easy with it. And it kind of slowly goes into place. Isn't that neat? Like literally just pulling a handle and you go back in place. And then you can pull the handle to, and it kind of is assisted. It has like a piston assist underneath it. So it doesn't have to really do much but pull the handle. And then once that's in place, you just grab the strap and lift it back up like so. Put It, it does recline pretty good. So you can put it right where you want it. And then, once it's locked in place, you just lift the headrest. So that's pretty easy to put these seats in and out. Doesn't take much effort. So you have the ability to have like a massive amounts of cargo space or a pretty good amount of cargo space back here in a third row seat. Pretty awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this down by pushing this button. It's going to beep at you and go right on down. And if it if something's in the way, it will stop and go back up. It's similar to an elevator in that way. It's not going to crush your grocery cart or anything like that. All right, so let's go ahead and open up this gas cap, this gas door, fuel door, by pulling this button here. And in here, um, behind the locking fuel door, you have this fuel cap. You can unscrew it, and you can mount it right here. There's this little place to put the cap. So you don't have to hang it by the string. The string is there to keep you from losing it, um, and also falling on the ground or whatever. But a lot of people will hang it down, and it's touching the paint and scratches the paint. You don't have to do that, because you do have a place to hold it. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up this door. And so we can take a look at the third row. Now this is pretty cool because a lot of times this front seat gets in the way and sometimes you have to adjust this seat to adjust that seat. But the way this works is you just lift this handle here and it kind of sandwiches up like that and you kind of move the thing, the whole thing forward and you notice it just kind of um, spoons, uh, I guess it spoons itself to the front seat so that way you can really have a massive amount of space to walk in to get to the third row. And there is the third row seats. And you see they have pretty decent, pretty decent amount of leg room with the seat all the way back. I mean, well, it's not really that great with the seat all the way back, but you can put it forward and back depending on your needs. And, you know, of course, those seats, you can see that they're reclining a little bit now. So you've got third seat recline, second row recline, all that good stuff. You have cup holders. You have a storage compartment right over there that lifts up and you can put stuff in there. And you've got lights and vents and all that stuff for everybody so they'll be comfortable and happy. And then this, you just kind of push it back in place. See how far it goes back? That's what I'm saying. I mean, this is a little bit too much 
leg room for the second row, they can always go forward a little bit to allow for the third row passengers. But it's a lot of flex space. You see these tracks here, they go way up and down. So you can really get the, to the position that you want. Okay, so like I said before, there's this little button here to close the door, open and close the door when you're in the inside. So I'm gonna use that this time to close the door. All right, so let's go ahead and look in the engine compartment and check out the 3.5 liter V6 with the VBT system. So just here in the center, uh, just, to, just to the slight right of the Toyota symbol is a little latch there. And there it is, it's covered up with plastic for the most part. And it's a 3.5 liter V6. And I guess you can see a little bit of engine up here in the front. But there is an engine underneath that plastic. Pretty smooth running engine. Gets good gas mileage, plenty of power. All right, so let's take a look on the inside more. Okay, so to start the vehicle, all you have to do is put your foot on the brake and push this button. All right, here we are on the inside and plenty of room. Leg room is crazy awesome. Knee room is pretty much unlimited almost. And so let's go ahead and start over here. On the driver's door, we have a bunch of buttons. We do have some storage space there on the side. Big speaker, little pocket there. All the windows are automatic uh, to where you could just push the button and it'll automatically roll the window up or down. And the rear windows roll down to about right there. So they don't go all the way down, but that's, um, you know, that's just a characteristic of the back windows. And then the front windows go all the way down. You can lock out the other power windows if you want to by pushing that button. Power door locks are here. And then your side mirrors, uh, your heated side mirrors, you can turn and adjust them with this little joystick you just have to turn it to the appropriate side to adjust it another thing about the side mirrors uh, they do have the little heated light there but also you see that little symbol it looks like two cars that is your blind spot monitoring system so when you're driving if there's a car in your blind spot that's going to light up and let you know that there's a car there if you turn your turn signal on when there's a car there in that direction, it's going to really beep at you and get your attention to make sure that you don't uh, get in an accident. So it's a really good safety feature. Okay, so over here, uh, we have some more window. This is a window control here. This is your rear vent. So I'm going to just open it up to show you. So looking back here, hopefully you can see in the rear view mirror, Okay, you see that window is now opened, and then I can close it like so. So on both sides, you have this vented glass that will kind of pop out and allow some airflow uh, behind the vehicle. And that's what that button there does. Your traction control, you can always turn it off here if you need to. Default is always on. If you need to spin tires, let's say you're stuck in the snow or something, you can push that button. Parking sensors. Uh, you can turn them on and off here and so when you're backing up if you get too close to something it will be at you and let you know you're close to something and you can of course it has the backup camera as well plus your blind spot monitoring system you can turn that on and off here as well a little place to put some change it looks like or anything you want and the power doors can be turned off using this button so that way if you have like children in the back and you don't want them to push the button open up the door constantly while you're you know whatever doing whatever um, you can turn that feature off here so here is the steering wheel and the steering wheel is let me aim the direct the air conditioning is on because it's very hot but i had to aim it away from the camera but anyways here is the steering wheel very high quality looking has the stitching on the inside here and on the center part 
it's just a really comfortable quality steering wheel it does have the bolsters here to give you a good lateral control there and it is you know the leather wrapping is tight on the steering wheel but it has a little bit of a give to it so it doesn't dig into your hands too much and it's very grippy so you you get a good grip on the steering wheel as you're driving so here on the steering wheel we have a bunch of buttons of course and so on the left side here you've got your volume up and down you can change through your presets on your radio here now once you pair your Bluetooth phone with the system you can use these buttons to receive calls but also hang up on calls so this if somebody is calling you and it starts ringing even if the radio is blasting, you can still hear it. will dim out the radio and start ringing through the system. There's no need to fumble and try to find your phone to answer the phone. All you have to do is push this button and say hello and talk to the person on the other end. And when you're done, you just push this button to hang up. Also, if you want to make a call while you're driving, you just push this button and say the name or the number that you want to call. And when I say name, it has to be somebody in your phone book. So if you have a John Smith in your phone book, as long as it's spelled John Smith, you just say call John Smith and it'll call him. And if there's people that you know have the same name or similar name, it'll give you the option to um, you know call out the exact one you want. Okay, so here on the right side, uh, this screen corresponds with this little menu system here in the center of your uh, gauges. And you can see the gauges are really awesome with that kind of like a dark blue in the background and then you have the white lettering contrasting it really nice looking classy so the RPMs are there on the left with the temperature gauge and then you have the speedometer and the fuel gauge there to the right um, but that center screen you can see it's 98 degrees outside so it has the outside temperature uh, gauge uh, thermometer and then your odometer there at the bottom but that center portion is controlled with these buttons to the right of the steering wheel on the right of the steering wheel. So I'm going to kind of cycle through just to kind of show you uh, the different screens you can have. So this one right here is kind of distance to empty, average fuel economy information. I can scroll down and get more information on that particular in, uh, screen, even a blank screen if I want to. But uh, pushing to the right goes to another tab uh, in which it, this one shows your compass and then you have your uh, what your radio is doing. Any messages would be stored here and you can go into your settings and you can customize the screen a little bit. Also on the uh, the compass here, I'm not sure if this is the accurate, um, but I think if you have a navigation set, it'll give you some clues there um, based on you know which way to go. I'm not 100% on that. Okay, so basically that's you know the the main features there. Um, you go left and right to the different tabs, and then once you're in a tab, you can go scroll up and down and get information there. So that's the whole idea behind this button. Uh, this, these buttons here, there's a back button and all that stuff. Okay, so here is your touchscreen radio. And it has a lot of cool stuff. And right now we're in the audio. But let's go ahead and go to, well, let me show you. This is the... Um, this is the CD player here at the top, and then you'll notice all these backlit buttons. Uh, they're basically soft touch buttons. You do have a volume knob, actual physical knob there, and tune through the stations there. So let's go ahead and go to apps. And apps is where you find a whole bunch of different options. Uh, your navigation, your audio, phone, messages. Um, you can you have an eco uh, information. And uh, the driver e easy speak is pretty neat because it amplifies your voice through the microphone uh, to the rear passenger so that way they can uh, hear what you say and you can adjust it there. But let's go into the navigation just so you can see what the map looks like. You can zoom in and out to get your bearings. You can also put in a specific address um, in your address book or put in a new address. You can go home, you can look for different points of interest. Uh, you have all these presets there for the different addresses that you might want. So that's pretty cool. Then we can go back there. Let's go back to apps. And let's go to phone. Well, it's going to ask me to, to pair one. Once you pair your cell phone, it's going to have a screen where you can di actually dial a number, sort of like a, a touchpad on a, on a cell phone. Or uh, it also has your phone book options and stuff like that there. 
There's your radio with your presets there on the left. And there's lots of different ways of playing music through the sound system. AM, FM, satellite radio, you have your CD, USB, uh, Bluetooth audio, and auxiliary inputs. So, and also you can change the order of these if you want to. So, the radio is not just a radio. I mean, it's a, a full blast any, any way you, how you want to use it, uh, radio system. And it looks nice. I mean, it looks classy with that, that shiny black and the, the gloss everything. I don't know, it's just me. I like the, I like the way that looks. And the blue, the blue um, backgrounds just really make it look quality. Okay, so your climate control buttons are down here. And you do have a little screen to tell you what's going on. And it is a dual zone. Matter of fact, it's a tri-zone. You can see it even has the rear, the driver, passenger, and the rear. And uh, so you can sync all of them if you want to. You can sync the, just the front. You can sync none. Sync, you know, you can sync it all you want. Now, if you have a sync like this, all you have to do is change one of them and it will unsync that one, but these two are still synced. Now, if I change that one, then it unsyncs everything. So, pretty neat there. Fan speed in the front, fan speed in the back, and your temperatures. Okay, so here is, here's your shifter. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in reverse so you can see the backup camera. Now there's two things will happen. The backup camera will pop up, but also your uh, parking sensors will be, you know, active too. So if you get close to something, it's going to beep at you. Now you notice that the, uh, the backup camera is a little distorted looking. And this is, a, this is a, for a good reason. Uh, you want to be able to have the, the most visibility possible left right up and down you can see from the bumper to the sky and all the way to the left and right um, but the only problem with that is it distorts the image so they solve that problem by putting these lines here that kind of clue you in onto the not only the width of the vehicle but also your distance from things see that red line you do not want to go any closer than that red line because literally it looks like there's several feet there but it's actually just several inches here because the distortion is so strong on the edges but less in the middle so here in the middle uh, this might be several feet but this is only a few inches you notice how big the tag looks to give you an idea uh, that tag is not very big but you notice it looks very big there on the corner so they give you those lot guidelines to help you out so definitely want to heed the lines okay so let's go ahead and continue down there's neutral there's drive but if you need to change gears, all you have to do on the 6 speed transmission is to put it over here to uh, the sport mode. And once you're in sport mode, you can cycle through the gears if you need to, like so. And I'm not sure if it's actually going to let you start off in 6 gear. It might, it might, but I don't think that, that would be good. But uh, it does give you some level of uh, changing through the gear ratios if you need to. You can always put it back in drive and, and the vehicle will take over changing gears if you need to do that. So there's the shifter and the shifter is real nice with the wood grain and then the leather on the other side. And it's kind of angled this way so it's more comfortable to reach. Okay, so down here we have this uh, little cup holder thing that pops out. And then you got a place to put some cups. And of course it gets completely out of the way when you're not using it. Heated seat controls are right here. You have left and right for driver and passenger. And here's your USB and auxiliary inputs for your radio. 12 volt power supply there. Pretty good size storage area under all this stuff. I'm going to put my phone in there to give you an idea of how far it goes in. It um, is perfect for you know, setting the phone or whatever. You can put it in sideways. It goes all the way in. You have another power supply down there huge open area for putting stuff there in the center just put, I mean you could like put your shoes there or ladies could put their you know pocketbooks or whatever there that'll be a good spot and then cup holders are here and then here's a cool spot it's kind of rubberized so you can put your phones there or whatever you want um, it's not it doesn't have much of a lip but it's rubberized to where it kind of grips whatever you put there so it doesn't slide much and a little place to put a pencil or a pen there then you have a storage pocket back in here but this thing lifts up by pushing this button and it's a really solid feeling 
um, quality thing, this, this separator. So in here we've got a pretty decent sized pocket. Let's see if I can show you. It goes all the way up under there. So be careful about cluttering it up because you might actually lose stuff because it's so big. All right. So let's take a look up here. And on the rear view mirror actually has buttons itself. So it has your compass. So the vehicle's facing southwest. And you can turn that on and off. If it's distracting you, you can turn it off. It does have an auto dim rear view mirror, which you can turn on and off here with this button. Now these buttons are your garage door opener controls. So you can pair your garage door opener with this system and you just push the button and open up your door and drive right in. Okay, so here is a place to put sunglasses in there and it's felt it has like a, a foam on the inside to protect your protect your glasses. But if you lift it up and drop it there, then you have a conversation mirror that you can see everybody in the back, all the way to the back. Has a good wide angle view. All right, you have some tap lights for quick reading light if you need those. Uh, also, if you want to turn all the lights on, you can turn the push this button. Uh, if you put it there in the center position, it will uh, the, one, the lights will turn on with the door when the door opens, any of the doors. Or you can have it turned off to where even if the doors open, the interior lights will not turn on. You can open up either one of the side doors or the back door with these buttons. And these buttons are for your sunroof. So here's the sunroof. It does have a shade that opens up. And uh, it's, you know, completely blocks 100% of the light. So we can open that up and we can vent the uh, sunroof like that. Or we can open it up all the way. That's as far as it goes. Alright, and like a day like today where it's pretty hot, I don't want the sun on me, so I could just close the shade. Alright, take a look at the visibility. So what do you think about this vehicle? Let me know in the comments. Do you have any experience with one of these? Have you ever driven one? Have you ever test driven one? Do you own one? Do you drive one every day? Please leave it in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it. I'm sure everybody else would too. And if you have any questions or comments or clarifications, anything I got wrong or anything like that, please, or skipped over, didn't do a good enough job explaining, Please leave the, uh, the correct information in the description. That will really help me out and help everybody else out. Okay, so thank you for watching. And thank you to Sparks Toyota for allowing me to show off an awesome van. And I'll see you next time.